All right. We are up to problem solving seven. It's pretty incredible. So last week we looked at this question about arts extravaganza. The school is hosting an art festival and there's a bunch of adults and children coming and we got to make coffee and punch and how much should you make? Um, so if you want to pause and read the, the whole problem, you can, but I'm assuming that you've been working on this all week, so I won't waste too much time on the problem. Where I will spend some time is looking at your work. I have two students' works to analyze today, and uh, this is the first one. So the student um, started Art Extravaganza. One pack of coffee makes 75 cups of coffee. 75 plus 75 equals 150, not enough. 75 plus 75 plus 75 equals 225, that's enough. Do I want each adult to have two cups? Yes. 75 times three equals 225. 225 plus 225 equals 675, which is two cups each. How many coffee packages? 75 equals one, so 75 plus 75 plus 75 plus 75 plus 75 plus 75 equals 675. Or 75 times six is 75 times three times two, okay? So six coffee packages is what this student found. Punch is the kids. Do adults want some? Have extra. I want 200 punch, punch drinks. Yes, kids plus adults. I want 140. So I think you decided that instead of wanting 200, that'd be too much punch. You're gonna go more for the 140 range. So 75 plus 50 is 125. If one package makes 20 cups, then 70 packs, uh, sorry, five packages make 100 and seven packages make 140. So seven packages of punch. How much water do I need? One package is four liters of water. So four uh, packages times, sorry, four liters of water times seven equals 28 liters. Do an arrow here for the next page. Coffee, I need six packages of coffee or 675 cups of coffee, and each parent gets two cups. Punch, seven packages of punch, 28 liters of water, 140 cups of punch. Each kid gets two cups, and there are some extra 40 for the adults. So some things that I wanna highlight that I really enjoyed with this problem. First, just your general organization. I really like this idea of gluing in the problem on the left side of your page, and then titling your next page and continuing on. I think that's a Miss Falkenberg uh, strategy and I think it's wonderful. It really makes it clear and if you need to reference any of the information in the picture in the uh, problem it's right there. Um, I like that you started with only part of it. You're going to start with coffee and figure that part out and you're just going to say okay well what if I had two packages? Is that enough? Oh that's not enough. Is three packages enough? Yes it is. And then you kind of went from there. Um, the next thing I really liked is that you explained your thinking through words throughout the piece. You wrote yourself questions like how many coffee packages? And then you show the answer. Two cups each. I want 200 punch drinks, no or yes. So asking questions and actually writing them down in their work really allowed me to see what you were thinking and come along for the ride. So I really enjoyed that. And I also really liked that when you were hosting a party, you wanted to host more than enough. So this was rare for the answers that I saw where you actually had way more coffee and juice made and that was on purpose so that your guests would have more than enough coffee and juice. And I think when we're talking about real life problem solving and using math for real problems, that's a big strength is that you thought through wanting to provide more than enough for your guests. You know, you want to make sure there's enough coffee. Um, so great work on that one. And then I have one more students who I want to show. Uh, this one here, um, so they have the title, Art Extravaganza, and then they have some of the important information, 200 adults and 50 kids. You can see the left side of their page is coffee. So first they're saying 25, 25, and 25 make 75, 25, 25, and 25 make 75, 25 and 25, two thirds make 50. So this is showing that one, two packages and two thirds would make exactly 200 cups of coffee. And then on this side on the punch, 
they're looking for 50 cups of punch. So if 20 is one batch, 20 plus 20 is 40, 10 is half a pack, so your 10 is there. So to get exactly 200 cups of coffee, you'd have two and two thirds packages. To get exactly 50 cups of punch, you'd have two packs and a half. And then telling the organizer, if I had to tell the organizer for the amounts of packs, there would be three coffee packets and three punch packets. So some things I really liked about this one. Uh, first, I liked that you used the draw it out um, strategy. You started with some artwork here on the top. Not only does it make the punt, make the, the work look nice, it actually helps you to think in terms of what the question's asking. I also really liked that you split up this into two columns because it made it really easy to say, okay, this is the copy work, this is the punch work. Um, I always like when students write down our entry, attack, and review steps, so I enjoyed that as well. Um, this idea of showing the groups and how three groups of 25 would make 75, I thought that was really neat too. And, and that actually shows that if you want exactly 200 cups, you could do two and two thirds, um, which is what we've just been talking about with mixed numbers um, and, and irregular fractions. So I thought that was neat as well. Um, and the last part I liked is that you had a really, really accurate answer here. Math wise, this is exactly the amount of coffee and punch. So you had like a math answer up here. And then you said, okay, but in the real world, are they really going to find a two thirds pack of coffee? I'll just round up and say, hey, three packs of coffee, three packs of punch, go. Um, so I liked that kind of like accurate math up here and then more realistic answer down here and having and being able to show both of those. So awesome work by both of you. And I hope one thing that you're noticing when we're looking at two different pieces of work that had quite different answers is that there is no correct answer when you're talking about problem solving. There's reasonable and unreasonable, um, but you can have many different correct answers. Both of these are completely correct and were communicated really, really clearly. Okay. Moving on, our uh, strategy of the week is called number line. Using a number line is a great way to simply, to simplify and visualize problems, it has many uses. Had to fix that. Uh, simplify and visualize problems. And it has a ton of uses. Number lines are really, really useful. Um, how to make one, draw a line, and then label it with numbers or dates or distances or anything else that helps make sense of your problem. Um, there's an example of a very simple number line. Um, but for many problems, you can use a, a much more complicated number line. And uh, it's a great way to understand the problem, either on the entry stage or on the attack stage. Also a great way to communicate your understanding to others is by drawing out a number line. Okay, so the problem this week is called bus trip landmarks. A grade six class is planning a 300 kilometer bus trip to Blackfoot Crossing Historical Park. The bus ride will take about four hours. The students want to figure out how long and how far they will travel before they pass these landmarks the welcome to Alberta sign at 10% of the way and the picnic sign at 50% of the way. So the question is, when will they pass each landmark? Enjoy. Go.